great. Just to say thank you, everybody, for joining. We will give everybody um, one more minute to join and settle. And it's great to see everybody's face. Um, if you're able to turn on our camera, we're always really welcoming that. So please feel free to open your camera. Um, thank you, Lira. Nice to see you. Emerson, nice to see you too. It's Roger. <laughs> it's always Good nice. Good morning. Good. Yes. Thank you, Dominique. Yes, everybody, if you can uh, type your name and affiliation location into the chat box, that's also great um, so that the speakers know where you're coming from. Yeah, I see more colleagues people joining. Hi, Pana. Thank you for joining. Okay, um, Dominic Fresha, shall we start? Maybe we can wait one more minute. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And just for everybody who joined, um, this is a very interactive community of practice. So we we encourage um everybody to turn on your camera if you're in a situation that you can. Uh and you know, please be always uh interactive um, in the chat or uh, raise your hand and uh, join the discussion. It's great to see everybody's face. Thank you for everybody who's turning on your cameras. Yeah, Magdalena, great to see you. How are you? Hi, nice to see you. Hi. Good evening to all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we can we can start. And okay, the was... great. Yep. Um, all right. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome to the sixth community of practice keeping track of the Paris Agreement. Uh, my name is Reina Otsuka. I'm the digital lead for nature and climate at the United Nations Development Program. And um, apologies on my, my phone. Um, I'm calling in from Casablanca Airport Lounge now. Uh, and I'm on my way back from Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, back to New York, where Roger and Dominic and uh, many of us were there to um, do a technical validation of the Cote d'Ivoire National uh, Carbon, uh, Carbon Registry. So um, as we start the call, as usual, uh, we're asking you to please type in your name, affiliation, and vocation in the chat box. Uh, this community of practice gathers technical experts uh, from government, development partners, and digital experts every three months to discuss the digital public good uh, open source code base for national carbon registries and transparency systems. The code base is on GitHub, if uh, somebody can put it in the chat box. Um, it's free and open to any country to use, adopt, and improve to fit national needs and institutional framework. So we're sharing experiences from countries that's already uh, used it uh, so that we can learn, um, you know, what are the challenges and lessons learned and how it was uh, useful for um, your journey. Uh, this month, we will discuss two items. The first is the Côte d'Ivoire National Carbon Registry Experience. Uh, we have Roger here, and I think Siriki will also join, uh, if not here. Uh, sorry, I just have limited uh, view on my phone. Apologies. Uh, and uh, we will, uh, they will share their experience on developing the new registry uh, with a system walkthrough. And then we will also have an inspiration call from Pana from UNFCCC. And, and Pana, thank you for joining and sharing uh, the new tool for automating the carbon uh, project development tool 
we're really looking forward to see that and how that can be also connected to countries national carbon registries. Um, as usual, this is an interactive session, so we will have time to open for questions and discussions after each presentation. So please feel free to type in your questions uh, as we go. Uh, and also um, really encourage you to unmute and uh, talk and also share your own experience uh, uh, when we get to the discussion. Um, and we are also encouraging you to uh, turn on your camera whenever you can so that we can see each other and also you know, get to know each other as we go. So yes, I look forward to a rich discussion and learning session. And with that, I would like to give the floor to our first speaker. Uh, I guess it will be Siriki um, to first uh, uh, explain us. Uh, she, he's the carbon market expert from Cote d'Ivoire uh, to walk us through um, their experience in Cote d'Ivoire. So over to you, Siriki. Okay, thank you very much, Reina. Uh, please uh, uh, give me one minute to, to connect my charger. Of course. In the meantime, Dominic, if you want to share any thoughts, you're still in Abidjan, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm still in Abidjan. And as you said, we were or we are there to um, have this validation, technical validation workshop. And I'm sure Sirik, you will be really keen to really dive into the journey into this to get to this stage. And um, that's there's a lot to learn about this. There's a lot to also take as uh, takeaways, and I'm sure that we will be able to, to deep dive into this with Siriki and, and Roger. Not sure if you're ready, Siriki, but uh, if not, maybe we, Kifresha, can you just go to the next slide, maybe? And for our French speaker, please do not hesitate to, hesitate to just um, ask the question if in, in French, and I will be happy to translate. Since Siriki and Roger are actually French speakers, we can we can do the French translation as well. That's that's perfect, and that's okay. Like, and you can say that in French too, Dominic. <laughs> yeah, and I can say that in French too. Yes. So, uh, en fait, juste pour dire que en fait, on est là uh, à Abidjan pour l'atelier de validation technique du registre carbone de, de Côte d'Ivoire. Et c'est un, en fait un, 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 un long processus qui était un peu fastidieux, mais en fait, on est là et je suis sûre que mon collègue Siriki, il pourra donner les informations nécessaires, ou bien les informations pertinentes qui pourront un peu vous guider, ou bien tous les intéressés, les pays intéressés qui pourront guider un peu dans, dans ce processus-là d'avoir un registre national carbone qui fonctionne et qui aussi euh, a, a été beaucoup, beaucoup amélioré et qui un peu euh, est personnalisé en fonction du contexte de, du, du pays. Et je pense que Reina l'a bien dit. Donc, il y a le, le, le registre, le code base qui est là, mais euh, on le met à disposition des pays pour pouvoir l'adapter à leur contexte. Et donc, c'est à partir de là que c'est à partir de là que chaque pays, après des séries de travaux techniques et aussi des séries de consultations, finissent finalement par avoir quelque chose qui est, qui est pour le pays. Donc, je ne sais pas si Siriki, est-ce que vous êtes prêt ou bien euh, c'est bon Oui, c'est bon, c'est bon pour moi. J'étais en train de connecter mon chargeur. OK. Ça va, c'est bon. Euh... Donc, over to you, Siriki. OK. OK, so thank you very much to uh, UNDP uh, staff for this opportunity, donc, so to, to communicate uh, around the, our... Uh, Carbon registry. Sorry for my for my English. I'm not uh, I'm not speaking English. So my name is Silke. It's great. Kulibali. My name is uh, thank you. My name is Silke Kulibali. I'm the national uh, consultant, carbon market consultant. So my my presentation will uh, will will be about also the. The, the environment of development of our national carbon registry. So I will begin about uh, the, the, the DPG carbon registry. UNDP has developed an interoperable digital system which allowed countries 
to efficiently manage data and uh, and the national carbon projects. The registry used open source code, which allowed country to reduce and adapt the, inform the information modules and documentation technique and technique do documentation according to their own needs and context. So the DPG registry follow international best practice based on country uh, contribution. It is, a, it is aligned with the UNFC guidelines and help reduce production costs and implementation times. And now the development uh, process. So uh, we have uh, work to develop, to, to, to adapt the, the DPG registry of, uh, of UNDP in our uh, national contest. The first step has been to collect uh, the collection of uh, documents relating to the national carbon market. So the document used are the term of reference, the strategic framework, the international institutional and the regulatory framework, and uh, the documents uh, about the, the pre project, like, uh, payment of relation projects, and the procedure manual, and other documents uh, resources has been used also. So after collection of these documents, we have analysis of all, of all of these documents. So the documents allowed us to understand the national context through the regulatory and institutional framework and the procedure of manual. And the, the last step has been to, as the last step is it was about vestiges, vestiges with national stakeholders. So we have a physical interview and a virtual workshop on June uh, 14, which has allowed us to collect opinions and recommendations from national stakeholders. We were thus able also to establish the workshop of user profile. So all of the step work has permits us to, 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 to establish the, the workshop of uh, the different profile of users. So we have three uh, three profile of users. The first is the, the, the project developer. Project developer is uh, is is one who implements the project and provide data on the carbon project. And uh, and and uh, also we have uh, the certifier uh, profile. The certifier profile is the independent entity. We carry out the verification and validation of carbon projects. And, and, and then we have also the carbon market office. It is the administrator of the registry who monitor the project, check the eligibility, the certification and grant carbon credit. So we have three different uh, profile uh, in our registry. And uh, you must know for the, the, the for the signing of uh, different documents, we have uh, the Ministry of the Environment Ministry and the Economic Ministry. We we can sign different documents in our registry. And next, so the the the, the cost to the, the customization of the platform require different modification, which allowed us to translate the platform uh, from French to uh, from French to from English to French and we have also created interactive dashboards which allowed uh, visualization using simple graph for each user profile we have also created a platform for managing the eligibility of projects idea or not because we know that uh, all of projects will not pass the step of idea. So we have a platform to manage the, the, the eligibility of idea before uh, adding the project in the, in the registry really. 
And uh, also we have integrated a geolocalization and project overlaps detection system. It will permit to avoid uh, overlaps of, of, of different projects. So uh, we will avoid that two developers uh, climb uh, this uh, climb credit on the same area for 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 some for some some sectors of like uh, forestry, agriculture, and other land use. And after we add an electronic and manual signature management system, also uh, this uh, this step will permit so. so to the ministry of to the environment ministry or economic ministry to sign directly the different documents in the platform or to to sign to sign uh, manually also so we have uh, two two uh, we have two uh, two choice of of signings and also we create a document authentication system that make it possible to verify the authenticity of a document issued. So if you have a document, you can verify if this document is really issued to, 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 to the carbon registry of, of Côte d'Ivoire through this, uh, this, this authentication document system. And uh, we have also had a generative IA that can answer basic questions about carbon finance, about uh, how this registry is uh, is used and other uh, simple questions for the for the customers. So we 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 have done uh, others uh, modification and but I think there there, there, there is uh, and uh, in our in uh, in uh, in our. Uh, in our uh, work, we have uh, we have made some challenges for configuring the registry. There is uh, this is three three challenges that we have uh, that we have uh, we have made. Uh, the first is the engagement of all stakeholders. Uh, one of the, one of the it is one of the immediate challenges we faced. Uh, it has been. Uh, Difficultly, difficult to 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 involving all uh, stakeholders, to involve uh, all of stakeholders and uh, bringing them together around uh, this important topic because there are there are too many there are many stakeholders and which in different uh, ministry. So one of the difficulties is, is this one of the big difficulties is and other difficult. Uh, that we have made is uh, the implementation of procedures, uh, like uh, like it is in the procedure man manual, because uh, the procedure manual is uh, is not always clear. Clear, there is some some point that is not uh, clear to to implement in in the in in, in digital system. So it is it has been uh, the the other difficult that we have made also. And then uh, we have uh, a, also data security and privacy because uh, carbon registry is uh, is is very important for our country and all of documents and information in the carbon registry is uh, are important also. So it is uh, very important to to have a data security and privacy of, of, of all this the information and document. So it was also one difficult for, for, for us. After the, the difficult, we have uh, future plans uh, on Tuesday. So, uh, 23 July, uh, the registry was technically approved uh, during a validation workshop, bringing together all key stakeholders while waiting for the regulatory and institutional framework to come into force. It is up uh, to the consultant team to, to write a user manually for each user profile. Uh, that is to say, a manually for uh, developers profile 
manual for certifier profile and the manual for the carbon market office also. And after writing this manual, we will train the, the carbon market office team on the operation operation and the, the, the registry and what uh, use uh, the, the registry. Mm. Uh, so for for my part, I think it is it is all. <laughs> Again, sorry for my for my English. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, yes, Siriki. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the English presentation. You are 3,000 better than my French, or more, actually, yeah. a million <laughs> times better. Um, and you're doing amazing. Um, please yeah. don't apologize. And I think I'll just um, pass it to Roger to do the walkthrough of the system. Um, just to complement, uh, there has been a few innovations that happened in Cote d'Ivoire uh, because of great user feedback we got from several stakeholders. Uh, Siriki, you were saying that there were challenges, but I think the virtual workshop really helped to get good feedback from the stakeholders. Um, and I think there were a few functions like the geospatial data, uh, you know, you, you, you created this way of uh, gathering geospatial data and showing the, pilot, the, the project sites uh, and as well as the signature processes. Um, so these were added newly by the Cote d'Ivoire uh, team. So congratulations on those really interesting uh, added value to the system. So with that, I'll hand it to Roger. And after Roger's walkthrough, we will have some time to discuss and ask questions. Uh, Roger, over to you. Are you able to share your screen? OK. Thank you, Elena. Good afternoon, everyone. Do you see my screen? Dominique? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for your invitation. So uh, I want to say you welcome to the High World Coast Carbon Register. So that um, the website is in French. So I will, I, I will do some can be uh, explaining in the home page of the carbon registers that we gave you a welcome word that I say welcome to Ivory Coast carbon registers a few details of a carbon registers process and you have a the button for show more, show more about ours. We will read to about our sections to see um, many information about um, carbon register. We see here is a statistics of uh, mitigation, um, mitigation results and different uh, statistics of the program. You can see unity um, reductions issues, transference, and uh, authorizations, um, retires, and others. See, we can see the different actions in these sections. The action we can participate to Ivory Coast Carbon Register, and the different statistics in mean, the global statistics that you can see this. Another way is the frequency 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 questions that can. We can retry it. And the, the a recent project that we have um, registered in the, the carbon register. Another way is the, 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 the generative AI that we have integrated in the carbon register because that is a, a new market in, in our country. So uh, many persons that doesn't have a, a keyword, a, a keyword, for much comprehension though. So we have had this for one the developers or other users have questions relative to um, article sites that we can propose this and the 
Mais juste à et à génération, à dire aux gens responsables. In our parts, if another part is about about sections about section that can give a a proposed information about registers the missions and the different values that register the givens so you have, have transparency integrity and efficacy Another way is a explorer sections. An explorer sections that give a menu, a menu that you can show more about programs, show more about organizations that you are registered in the carbon registers. You have a possibility to have a credit, a credit statistics and the different sectors. I will open the this credit. You we show a different statistic of credit. Credit we have um, authorized, credit we have issued, credit we have uh, returned. And from different um, different programs, you have see a different level that we the organization have, has, and uh, the different carbon credit that we uh, we have. Another section is an eligibility section in the, the Carbon Register web, web, website. In this section, the developers can see uh, different criteria that can be participated to a carbon register in Ivory Coast. Some criteria are listed here that can be related. And if you think that a, a, a project high Included in this uh, criteria that have the possibility to, to submit a, an idea note. An idea note that is the, the point of enter of developers to participate to Ivory Coast Carbon Register uh, market. So um, we have an organization section that can give some more information about these organizations. We have a possibility to mass. Uh, upload a note and another document that is a conformity document about all criteria that is defined for carbon market in Niagara Coast. And also, we have a possibility to, to track, to monitor the status of a idea note that have submitted and that we permit uh, the developers to have always informed at the different step of the path that, that the register it is. If you are uh, projected, if you are uh, waiting for signature and over this. I will connect with a a developer that I submitted the idea note. So we can see a, a profile. I can see that this space is, for example, uh, the, the, waiting, the waiting rooms, the waiting rooms before participate, before access to carbon research platforms. So here we can tracking some information to idea note and can see details of idea note. You can also have a possibility to have modification. This modification we've had not over one mouth and have also possibility to, to give a contradiction to response of um, carbon market offers. If you are not uh, very, if you are not in adequation with the, the results that he has, this section can uh, give in, in commentary 
that are sent to the carbon market for, for review is idea not or with the result of the idea not. We have another section that is that Roger, project. Roger, yes. sorry to interrupt. Just to say we only have uh, maybe three or four more minutes. It will be great if you can um, show us the carbon, the, the credit management system side as well. Sorry to, to cut you, um, but it, um, just to, if you can try to speed up a little bit, that would be great. Thank you so much. Okay. So I connected to developers, the developer spaces. When you connect to, to developer spaces, you can see the dashboard. You can see some information about transfers, about uh, credit, credit, and how many credits you have in an account. And you can see status of the project and another statistics. Overall is a project section that can uh, submit a, a project to uh, carbon market offices. Some enter some many informations about this project and the mitigation activity document um, can upload it hits and a, a, a file a real file that can be uploaded hit um, by the, the developers. And he can have also a possibility to to tracking, to monitoring, to tracking the, the different activity that you're developing, uh, register this activity here, and submit a submit a monitoring uh, report documents and to to carbon to the carbon uh, office market, and the certifier can be uh, sent a verification verification report uh, uh, document that can be validated all for the. The carbon market of icing. We have possibility to show a transfers, manage and show different organizations that were registered in the carbon registries. We can possibility to add it all teams that developer work it. Another section we can go in the details of the project. You can see different information different status of um, the, the carbon credit to buy the initial transfer to 12% and have some more information about um, different documents relative to, to this project. I will connect it to another account that is the carbon market office account. In the carbon market office count, we have seen uh, some projects we're waiting, a transfer rate um, that we're waiting, and we have seen for the government how many credits we have. We have some many, many, many statistics here. We have that interactive dashboard. Uh, we have possibility to have access to all IGN notes that we have submitted also and some give some response to all uh, idea notes. Another part is can have access to, to our project and have possibility to approve it some documents that are submitted by the developers and the certificates. Another way is the possibility to have and cartographic I don't show this, but um, cartographic data on different projects that we are registered in the register for avoid overlaps. And uh, we have also transfers but you can see all the transfers and there uh, can be different arrangements to, for different transfers that are a request for the developers. Now I wait in a signature document that gives uh, a possibility to have sig electronic signature or manual signature in these platforms. 
the possibility to accept or manage some organizations that you want to request to uh, participate to carbon register uh, in every because uh, you have possibility to manage his, his teams, carbon uh, market office teams with different um, with different status, with different status, and we have uh, monitoring documents that can manage a different documents that have been registered. In other ways, is a certificate or account thing. Certificate accounting can have um, the possibility to show the supported developers projects were submitted and uh, in other ways certified project, in other way how many credits uh, projects are certified it, and send some documents that the report, validation report of the mitigation activity document and a, a verification report that can send for each activity that developed in the project. You can see also all transfers that um, are in the register and organizations and um, manage a different teams that are, are in the project. So that we have um, all things, we have different parts of the register. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roger. A uh, big round of applause for Roger, please. Um, it's difficult on <laughs> Zoom, but uh, thank you so much. Um, any questions? We will take perhaps uh, five minutes for discussions and questions before moving on to Pana's presentation. Um, if anybody has any question, please raise your hand. And also, Roger, while we wait, um, perhaps you can share your the geospatial uh, part. I think we might have missed that uh, the connection. So if you can share that view, it will be great. Yes, Pana, please. Yeah, hi, uh, everyone. Yeah, my name is uh, Pana Siak, and I work here in UN After Policy Secretariat. And I work mainly for forestry and land use and also on digital technologies. We're very nice to participate, very glad to participate in this event um, of Cote d'Ivoire and UNDP. Uh, I was wondering, uh, the context of this, you develop a national registry, which means it, how are credits generated? Whose credits are these? For instance, is it a cap and trade of Cote d'Ivoire legislation the government has established, or is it who buys the credits, or is it something like REC or any kind of credit renewable energy certificates which government can buy or they can they are traded in the market? I mean, who is the buyer and who is the seller here? So, so what's the context that was not clear to me? Thank you. Great question. Uh, Siriki or Roger, please come in. And I will be happy to do the translation as well, if that's, that's okay for you, Siriki and Borje. Donc, uh, Monsieur Pana demande quel est un peu la portée du registre, quel est le type de marché et le type de crédit, et qui est, par exemple, le développeur de projet, et qui est aussi uh, l'acheteur dans votre contexte uh, ivoirien. Um... Donc, je pense que ça, c'est lui qui je vais répondre. OK. Merci beaucoup, Dominique, pour la transcription. Merci, Pana, pour, pour, pour la question également. Je ne sais pas si je peux répondre en français ou en anglais. En français, je peux traduire. Il n'y a pas de souci. OK, merci. D'accord. Donc, pour, en ce qui concerne le registre, en lui-même, on a, ça a été donc un soin du, du, du ministère de l'Environnement qui a voulu le registre assez large. Donc, pour prendre en compte l'ensemble donc des marchés, donc que ce soit les marchés réglementés ou les marchés donc volontaires, donc le registre couvre l'ensemble de ces marchés. Et le registre permet également de d'enregistrer de, même des projets climat, c'est-à-dire des projets qui n'ont pas forcément pour vocation de vendre du crédit carbone, mais qui contribuent quelque part aux efforts d'atténuation. Donc, le registre est assez large sur ces questions-là. 
Okay, so basically, Pana, so um, and the system right now is taking into consideration the voluntary carbon market and the mandatory carbon market. So that's how the Ministry of Environment wanted the registry to, what wanted the scope of the registry to be. And also the registry uh, take into consideration or even non-market um, uh, non market approach, basically all those type of climate change projects uh, where at some point we will still have in the mitigation of emissions reduction. So the registry will still consider those type of projects. Okay, so it's a kind of it's a preparation, and it can be put to any use whoever wants to use it. Maintenant, pour, pour la question relative aux au développeurs, euh, il n'y a pas vraiment de, de restrictions en termes de développeurs. Euh, tout le monde peut être développeur de projets carbone, donc ça peut être un ministère, le gouvernement lui-même, donc un ministère sectoriel technique, par exemple le ministère de l'agriculture, le ministère des eaux et forêts, le ministère de l'énergie peut être développeur de projets. Également, des entreprises publiques, donc des structures sous tutelle de ces différents ministères, là, peuvent être développeurs de projets, mais aussi là, les entreprises privées. D'ailleurs, en Côte d'Ivoire, on, on a beaucoup d'initiatives privées donc, de, dans le marché volontaire qui sont, qui sont en cours de développement. Et il y a aussi les organisations de la société civile qui peuvent être développeurs de projets. OK, thank you. So, regarding the developers' questions, Basically, can it be any act actors in the country? It could be the government or even the private sector or or CSO. So it's it's quite open. I'm not sure I got I, I caught your last comment, but if you if you still have any question, Pranay, please feel free to to ask. Yeah, so I understand that this is just a preparation for anybody who wants to create a market mechanism. There isn't any existing market mechanism. There isn't any buyer. For instance, the forest department of Cote d'Ivoire in one district, he says, okay, uh, I'm smart, I'll do this forestry reforestation. And then he prepares, then who approves his projects uh, in the current moment? Who approves his projects and who will buy his credits? Is it already there or it is just uh, uh, an, uh, it's something which imagines that in future, if such things happen, then they can make use of this registry or is already there? So is, is it already possible in Cote d'Ivoire to sell carbon credits? Okay, so I, I, I might take that one and, and, and I'm sure that Siriki will complement after, because I'm still in Cote d'Ivoire right now after the technical validation workshop. So basically, um, right now, the context is that they are still to have, the, they do have a carbon market um, framework. And then there was even an interministerial uh, panel to have a decree to really uh, make sure that the Bureau, the carbon market office, the one that he was mentioning, um, earlier is um, established. So they are at that level. And uh, regarding the, the carbon market context, there's a lot of um, carbon market happening with the private sectors mostly, but regarding bilateral agreement as of now, not 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 yet, but with the private sector, a lot of a lot is happening. So that is a little bit the context of, of the carbon market, but I'm not sure if Siriki si par exemple, est-ce que vous avez des, des ajouts par rapport à ce que j'ai dit? Donc, il demandait euh, quel, quel est un peu le contexte du marché au niveau de, de la Côte d'Ivoire actuellement? Est-ce qu'il y a déjà des, 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 des acheteurs, des, des, euh, des acheteurs et aussi des développeurs qui sont déjà là? Est-ce que c'est est seulement placé là pour attendre que les développeurs viennent plus tard? Oui, actuellement le contexte est assez assez dynamique au niveau donc des marchés carbone en Côte d'Ivoire. On a déjà beaucoup de développeurs, surtout dans les dans les systèmes affolus donc euh, sur les projets forestiers donc euh, en, en application donc de la nouvelle réglementation forestière. Donc on a des développeurs généralement privés qui sont euh, le plus souvent donc sur le marché volontaire. Donc, on a beaucoup d'entreprises qui sont lancées dans cette dynamique-là. Il y a le groupe pétrolier ENI, par exemple, qui exploite le gisement baleine pétrolier de la Côte d'Ivoire, qui actuellement est en train de développer un vaste projet de, de reforestation, d'agroforesterie, et qui ambitionne donc de, 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 de valoriser ces projets-là en termes de crédit carbone. Voilà, et ça sera en quelque sorte des projets de compensation, donc des émissions résiduelles qui vont, qui vont émaner du, du projet d'exploitation pétrolier. À côté d'eux, il y a d'autres euh, groupes, notamment des, des, des industriels dans le secteur du cacao, donc du chocolat également, qui financent de nombreuses initiatives d'agroforesterie, de reforestation, de préservation des forêts et tout. 
et qui sont aussi des projets carbone donc en, en, en attente. Donc, juste pour dire qu'il y a de nombreuses initiatives en termes de développement de projets carbone qui n'attendaient donc que ce cadre-là, en fait, pour, euh, je vais dire, pour, pour se poursuivre et pour, pour, pour s'officialiser. Moi-même, je travaille sur des, des, sur des initiatives pareilles avec, avec des partenaires privés. Ok, Oui, so, um, oui allez-y allez d'abord. no, no, he he was very aligned with what I said pre uh, earlier. That it there's a lot of carbon market projects actually um taking place into the country, and basically those are mostly with the private sector for now. There's like a really big um petroleum company uh, that is trying to implement like a carbon market project for the with the private sector, basically engaging the private sector, and also uh in The industrial sector, a lot is happening, but uh, with the private sector. So, and they were just waiting for the registry actually to be set up to be able to, to like formally engage into this um, into this type of activities. I, I know we don't have a lot of time, but uh, please, uh, to others, feel free to send your questions uh, in the chat, and we'll be happy to to answer later. Yeah, even I I think, um, Lorenzo, you had your hand up if you're still okay. there. Uh, thank you. No, I think most of my questions have been answered. It was related to, I saw only, for example, email. So one of my questions is that this is going to be limited to Article 6.2, but I understand that this is going to be open to any kind of trade, even voluntary travel markets. So I think it was answered. And um, the other question is, was, um, if the system is going to produce the emission units with serial number and everything, and uh, how is the system to ensure the security of the system? Thank you. Dominic, did you get the last part? Um, I think the first question was, how does the system Uh, generate the serial number, right? And then, Lorenzo, the second question? Uh, no, uh, yeah, well, one question was if this is going to be limited to Article 6.2 of the mm -hmm. agreement. And another question was for I don't, I don't know if it's for my side, but I can't catch, um, yeah. I couldn't catch Lorenzo's last question still. Lorenzo, perhaps you can type it in the chat box. We can't hear you. Uh, and then we can try to answer in the chat. Uh, while I think now we should just turn to Pana for his presentation. Apologies, Pana. So thank you for your patience. Um, and so if you can continue the discussion on the chat, it'll be great. And thank you again to Roger and Siriki for your presentations. Um, I'd like to now turn the floor to Pana uh, from UNFCCC to share us about the PDD uh, tool. Pana, over to you. And you're muted. <laughs> yeah, hi. So um, thank you, Rena. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, um, this this is a brief introduction about uh, our, our digitalization tool. Actually, we had a, in UNFCCC, we had a digitalization program under CDM. And you know that CDM is now morphing into Article 6. And we expect that this uh, legacy digitalization tool um, will be useful uh, in kickstarting um, the services of digital services to the new users of Article 6.4. Article 6.4, you know, the rules are still being framed, so projects cannot be registered as of now. But when once it is ready, right from start, people can start using this. So next slide, please. Uh, and and, and the, the context was that CDM grew fairly complex. It was a bottom-up program. The methodologies were proposed by the private participants and they were approved by the board and different participants, they had different views or interests. So methodologies, they mushroomed uh, in a large number as of now more than 200 methodologies and uh, with a small difference between two methodologies specific to a particular project. So they were not generalizable or they were not very broad. So this was a problem of complexity and often people had to use uh, services of, engage services of consultants to prepare a PDD because because of the too many regulations, methodologies, tools, and procedures, and, and, and so on and so forth. 
and at the same time, the, there were there were variability in the documents. Some documents, some PDD would be 100 pages long, especially in the beginning, and some would be 25 pages long. Uh, so for validators, this was an SSU burden as well for DO, for for DOEs. Um, so it, uh, it was thought that a uh, web-based interactive application could be developed, which will which will keep discipline over the developer. The developer cannot write anything he wants, and in, he cannot insert any story. He has to be navigating through the specified steps and insert only the relevant content. This helped the developer, and this helped the regulator, because regulator is free from unnecessary contact, content, and, and developer knows the step-by-step -step procedure. And there was uh, part of this was automated workflow, the, the whole procedure like approval and so on and so forth, which is yet to come. Only the first part, only PDD development is, is actually a prototype is ready now. Next, please. And so uh, the, this, this, this was done and presented to the CDMEB uh, executive board and they, they liked it and they asked uh, us to test with the stakeholders and it was tested with stakeholders, some 15, 20, stakeholders of different categories they participated they viewed uh, and, and ran the tool and they did validate that yes it does it does help an efficient process of pdd development because user is guided rather than uh, he, he has to be guided by the by the consultants and the data validation can be much of data validation can be automated so uh, entry uh, entry gate quality check uh, to data quality Relevant data comes in, only relevant data can be accepted. And if data is defective, it can be also rejected automatically. Um, and, and third one is calculations are performed digitally. So the, the algorithms, the calculation of emission reductions or baseline emissions can be done in most cases, um, they, they, they can be done automatically from the data given by the, by the um, project developers. And uh, the PDD structure, which was the third goal. Yes, it is achieved. This PDD document is standardized. There's no possibility of now generating a 50 page, 100 page PDD because that cannot be done. Only the relevant information comes in and, and the same information is found in the same section of the PDD. All PDDs are consistent and can be assessed by the DOEs with less labor and less time. Uh, so th these were validated and this was found to be Good and useful. Uh, yeah, next please. Um, the, the future, actually the whole program is bigger program. Uh, even, even though only PDD tool is ready yet, the whole program envisages digitalization of the full activity cycle, which means uh, registration of activities, then validation, which means the DOEs can log into the system and they don't have to read PDF files. They can go through the digital content and validate and click, okay, this is valid. If not, they can send it back to the developers. And monitoring the after validation, registration happens um, through the system. Uh, not this system, but mainstream system, which is the official, which is being developed for Article 6.4. And the monitoring data can be uploaded by the by the developers, project participants into this platform, which generates a monitoring report. Again, monitoring report generation could be sometimes complex. So this facilitates the, uh, the job of generating automatically a monitoring report and then verification. Then the, the DOE only has to concern himself themselves with the valid verification of the data to make sure that the data are correct. The calculations are assumed to be correct because they are done by the software and then issuance of credits, which is actually only a calculation of credits. And then the actual assurance happens in the official uh, official MIS, with, uh, which is being developed for Article 6.4. Um, then, so this was the whole activity cycle um, idea. And uh, in, well, once it is done, then the DOE, everybody, every stake, every type of stakeholder, like activity participants, the DOE, the DNAs, they have to issue certain clearances, authorizations, certain certain approvals, they can do it online and secretary staff can examine the documents uh, on behalf of the supervisory body and, and clear the documents online. And members of the supervisory body can always take a look at what's happening. Uh, so there's a whole workflow with a variety of stakeholders who can participate and, and they can grant their permissions, authorizations so that the process moves forward this was the idea. Um, now, 
This is also this idea of third party access developers to access data via an application programming interface. So in case of CDM, for instance, we had um, this idea, if you've heard about the CDM pipeline, it's a third party and those they have uh, done a great deal of work to, to dig up the information from PDF documents of registered CDM activities. And from that PDF, they digitalize information and build a database. But if each project is in Article 6.4, registered through this digital workflow, then you don't have to digitize data. Data is already available here on this platform and people can just write a single line uh, um, command and they can pull all the data and then they can develop applications like they are doing for a CDM pipeline currently. And so they can do it more easily and anybody can develop any application by pulling data from here. So that would be facilitated. So this is the, the larger picture and, and, and the tool which is already there and it is tested by people, can be tested by anyone even still uh, that can be tested if, if any of you are interested in testing or test driving and producing a, an actual PDD using the tool, you can contact Irena yeah, and, and she has an email address of mine and we can enable, we can explain how to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pana, for this uh, explanation or presentation. Just to clarify, so the users of this would be the project developers um, to automate the, the process? Right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, we the project developers that will also be connected to the registry, they might want to use this tool to develop the PDD, and then that data can be sent to the registry so that they don't have to re-enter everything manually. Yes, yes, that's correct. It's exactly a big advantage. I'm not sure how much big advantage it would be if they have to do PDD in French, for example, <laughs> for the war. But, but, but in general, yes, if somebody who logs into the system can easily develop a PDD much, much faster, and then that, that PDD, they, they can download in Word file easily, mm -hmm. and then they can do, they can do, they can submit it to any, anybody they are, they are going to submit. Great, thank you, Pana. We have uh, two minutes if anybody has any question to Pana and the UNFCCC PDD tool. Please feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat box. There's actually one question from Diana. I'm, I'm not sure if the question is for uh, for the, 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 sorry, the PDD or for the registry. Please feel free to just open your mic and Thank you. My question is to the previous uh, for the VR presenters for the system, and because this is continuing the Pana's question related to the things that are will be internationally regulated by UNFCC website and uh, the supervisory body um, instructions and national uh, platform uh, and their um, uh, objectives and their interconnections will be because this is national platform and uh, it somehow have to reflect uh, the things that are going on on national context, but international connection of Code d'Ivoire will be on the international uh, site, which Pana was presenting. Great question. Thank you, Diana. Um, Diana, uh, should we, Siriki, would you be able to answer that? Or maybe Pana, actually, you might be able to answer this too. I really understand as much as Diana would, because Diana, you are a member of the CDM Executive Board. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hi, Diana. Hi. Uh, so yeah, this this of course. Um, I, I mean, I, I can only guess. I can only guess. This is a facility which is being developed within Cote d'Ivoire for internal domestic policies and domestic actors, and for actual Article Six Point Four projects. Obviously, they have to register their documents on the A6.4 uh, infrastructure. And it's only there they can be verified. It's only there that they can be issued credits. So, but there are other, I mean, national domestic credit schemes. Then of course, this their, their registry would be very useful there. Thank you. The, the, my understanding is because this platform issue is uh, generally used for transparency, but it must be a bit, um, 
it's not so complex because uh, coming also from developing country, I understand for administering such type of um, systems I need resources and logical uh, justification for managing such, such platforms. So it must be justified by its use and its efficiency. Sorry to say, I'm not criticizing because we also are in this process and we see also the complexity of future continuous update and uh, operationalization of such platforms. Thank you so much, Diana, for the wonderful question. And it's a pity, um, Rachelle, the Article 6 focal point could not join us today. She was traveling on this day, but... Um, one thing that she did mention was the need for having a clear picture of the entirety of the carbon projects in the country. Uh, and of course, as you already noted, um, the international parts will be uh, done in the UNFCCC uh, in, in a platform or, or side, whereas this one is really, for, first of all, to get a registry of all of the projects. Uh, and then partially, part of that would be actually um, a domestic uh interaction or a voluntary interaction. Um, so that that was considered um, it, before starting the, the project. Um, so just to note that. Great, um, any other burning questions? Um, otherwise we are actually one minute uh, over, but uh, thank you so much for joining uh, in that very rich discussion. Roger Sariki, thank you for presenting. And Pana, thank you so much for presenting. And apologies, we, we couldn't take a lot of time on um, discussion. But uh, we will share the links. And uh, Pana, would you mind if we share the link to the PDD tool? Sure. Uh, yeah, great. Wonderful. And then we can um, inform all community practice members. Uh, and we will see all of you again in three months' time. Uh, thank you again for the great discussion. And have a great summer <laughs> ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. And all. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.